Hi guys, how are you doing? It's Dennis here. Today's video is going to be about expansion tanks. Uh, what they are, what they do, when you need one, and uh, how you can install one. Uh, the most common expansion tank size is this 2.1 gallon, so we can just call it a two gallon tank. And then if you have a larger home that has a 75 or 100 gallon tank, uh, most likely you have, uh, or you need a, a 4.5 gallon one. Now, when is one needed? By law, you need to have an expansion tank when your home has a backflow preventer at the water main uh, entering the house or a check valve throughout the plumbing system. For example, if you have a water heater with a circulation pump, then you surely have a uh, check valve and then this is required by law. Every time you heat, something expands in volume, including water. When you heat the water in the tank, it expands in volume. And under some circumstances, because of the water expansion, you can get a uh, accidental water discharge through this temperature and pressure relief valve. Although this is not what this valve is supposed to do. So if you get constant drips through the end of the pressure relief line, uh, or maybe uh, water gushing out of it, most likely you have a problem with an expansion tank and you will need one installed, but I'll tell you more about that further in this video. Um, well, let me get, get back to the tank. So uh, what you see here is, is a metal, metal tank that has a rubber ball inside the tank. So basically it's like a rubber ball. In fact, when you put your finger through, you can feel it. Uh, there's a um, rubber membrane here that's pressurized. Um, these come already pressurized from the uh, manufacturer, but they only pressurize either to 20 or 40 PSI. Some ma manufacturers pre-pressurize them to 20, others do uh, pre-pressurize them to 40. Uh, in this specific case, this brand name pressurized them to uh, 40 PSI. Uh, and the important thing here is uh, before you install one, you need to go ahead and check the water pressure in your plumbing. The best place to do that is right after the main valve for the house. So this is where the the water enters the house, you have a ball valve. So we will put this um, pressure gauge. So we had about 80, 80 PSI. So that means we need to pressurize the expansion tank to 80 PSI. All right, let's go back to the water heater. So that's a small two gallon tank. That's the four and a half gallon tank. And right here, the parts I will need. So you will need a uh, three quarter brass T, six inch or six to eight inch long, uh, three quarter brass nipple, a 90 degree el elbow, a brass elbow, and also a shorter nipple. Anything between an uh, inch and a half to two and a half inches is good. And I recommend that you use the brass fittings. Do not use galvanize. It's not worth it. Um, you would be saving just about uh, a dollar or two uh, per piece, but uh, the galvanize is not good. It rusts uh, and uh, it will leak very, very soon. Uh, so use uh, brass fittings. We will need uh, Teflon tape, blue Teflon tape, uh, pliers. Uh, I don't think we will need a screwdriver here. And uh, in this video, I uh, will show you uh, how to source the parts through Amazon. I will include links down below in the description for all the parts that I'm using today. Stay with me uh, through this video and you will be able to install one yourself. So very first thing we will do is turn off uh, the water to the water heater. Then I already have my hose attached here. Just make sure it's straight all the way down the driveway. Uh, and uh, then you'll come back here and open the drain valve. So we like to release the pressure out of the tank so we can go ahead and disconnect the, um, the water flex here on the cold side. And you need to install this on the cold side. Do not put it on the hot side. Uh, it does work, but there's problems uh, being on the hot side. It's better if you start on the cold side. So, but before I disconnect this, uh, I will actually get my fittings ready here. This is what we're gonna do. I'll pay attention to this um, short fitting that will go on top of the of the T and where the uh, um, water flex will screw on. 
as you see, the end of the fitting is quite sharp. Don't use it this sharp because it will cut through um, the rubber ring of your uh, supply line and it, it can cause leaks. So what I do is the following. I go down to the... Um, to the curb here and I use this concrete curb to flatten out the surface of the nipple to make sure that it doesn't cut through the rubber seal of the supply line. Let's see, this is good. See, no more, no more uh, sharp edges. And on top of that, I'll use my file to make the surface even more smoother. This is perfect. I'm confident there will be no problems with the supply line. It has happened. All right, so you get your blue tape and uh, you wrap it around the thread that is going to thread in the T. Okay, that much is enough. So you go about, let's see how many times. One, two, three, four times. It's about four times is enough. And then I still go over it like this, put some pressure on top of it. Um, so you, you shouldn't be putting too much because if you too, put too much, then it doesn't work. It just kicks it out. Uh, you should put just enough so all the blue tape stays within the, the connection. Um, and you should be able to see and feel the, the ribbons of the, of the thread. All right, we've got everything here and now I'm ready to disconnect the water supply. Now I had this uh, drain valve open because that will make sure I don't get water spill here. But you don't also wanna drain the whole water heater out just for this as soon as you ensure there's no water leaking up there you can stop the the drain valve you don't really have to drain all your water out and if you notice i didn't even shut off the water heater uh, the gas supply is still on the the burner is engaged it's not heating but you don't really have to turn it off so Uh, we had a little accident <laughs> uh, we had a little accident the, the water is coming back somehow so i will uh, actually go ahead and turn off the water uh, to the house completely so we run into we run into surprises of this sort i wasn't expecting that all right now we should be good. Now make sure you shut off the water to the house completely so you don't get surprises of this sort. Let's see what's going on. All right, this is better. This is better. I'm shutting off the, the drain valve. And now what we're gonna do is we will wrap around the blue Teflon tape, monster tape, right around here.
All right, that's about right. This is how much you need. And to be on the safe side, I'll put some Teflon uh, PTF E Teflon tape on top of it. Just make sure it's it's screwing on smoothly. All right, the T is going on. I'll remove this from here as it is no longer needed. like this let's put the short nipple The long nipple. So, in plumbing, nothing is about being, you know, too tight. It's about being right. So, if you prepare your connections right, you don't have to tighten too strong. Just enough. Here we go. To get a tight seal. It's not about strength. like this pointing upwards now it's time for the expansion thing but remember we need to pressurize it uh, the pressure in the house is 80 so I will be using this uh, compressor that I bought from Amazon and I will be including a link for it in the description below um, it's a very nice one because you can either plug it into your uh, cigarette a lighter outlet in your car or you can plug it in the 110 volt uh, power outlet in your home. So in this case, I'll be using the 110 volt outlet. Let me go around here. And with those new and fancy compressors, you actually um, set the desired pressure ahead of time. Like this. We want 80. <clears throat> actually, I will go like 82. I always recommend going a little bit higher. So at 82, I'll connect the, <coughs> the holes right here to the stem. <coughs> and then you just hit AC. 
and it starts pressurizing. See the, the existing pressure in the tank was about 45, and that's because it's hot outside. They pressurize them to 40 psi, and some other manufacturers pressurize them to 20 psi. All right, let's wait a little bit. Right here we go, 82 and it stopped by itself. Very smart. I really like this compressor. All right, I've got the tank uh, pressurized. I just need to put some Teflon tape on it and we're ready to place it on top of the water heater. When you use this uh, PTF Teflon tape, PTFE to be exact, make sure you never put it inside the pipe, always on the thread on the outside. It doesn't have to go inside. It will clog your faucets, the aerators of your faucets. All right, let's see. I'll actually do a little trick here. That flex line is kind of on my way and I'll take the opportunity before I put the expansion tank to screw on the flex on top of this nipple. Now if you use uh, hard pipes like brass nipples you don't really have to support it to the wall anyway it's not that heavy it's actually empty there's no water inside so it's not supposed to store water if it's heavy and there's water inside it's broken so uh as i said there's a there's a um, rubber membrane that does the trick and it doesn't last forever pretty much every time you replace a water heater and you have an ex existing tank you have to replace the tank as well i've seen many jobs where Plumbers would replace the water heater, but they would ignore the expansion tank. They just don't want to bother with it, you know, cheap plumbers. Uh, so you have to have it replaced with every water heater when you have one. And if you don't have one, this is how you can install it. Uh, now we're all done. I'll go ahead and uh, turn on the water to the house. And I'll crack this water valve open. Always do it slowly, guys. Pressurize the system slowly. Okay, it's looking good. This homeowner here should be good for another 10 to 12 years. He just got a new water heater installed, now the expansion tank. Uh, if you guys uh, like to do this job yourself at home, please check the links down below. You'll find the links uh, to Amazon where you can purchase all the parts and materials needed for this job. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.